Hey guys, Johnny May here and welcome to this week's quick tip where I'm going to show you the top 10 technique mistakes that I see piano players make. And these are not just beginner level mistakes. I see advanced and pro level piano players make these same mistakes. And unfortunately, most pianists are not even aware that they're making these mistakes, so they don't know what to actually fix in their playing. So in today's lesson, I'm not only going to show you these 10 mistakes, but I'm also going to show you how you can fix them so that you can start improving your piano playing. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, the first mistake I see students make, I call the balance beam mistake. And what I wanna do is I first wanna play it for you and let's see if you can spot what I'm doing and then I'll show you how to fix it. So this is Ode to Joy. Okay, doesn't sound bad, but I'm doing something with my technique that is not ideal. Did you spot it? Notice when I start the tune, I've got my thumb on this black note, and there's no rule that says you're not allowed to play a thumb on a black note, but it's generally better to play the black notes with your other fingers, like your two finger, or your three finger, or your four finger, and play the white notes with your thumb. And there's several reasons for this. One, it's a little bit easier to be accurate playing the black notes if you're using your other fingers, because if you use your thumb, you've gotta bring your whole wrist up above these black notes. And it's kind of awkward when you play this way because it's like you're up above the notes. It's almost like being a gymnast on on the balance beam and trying to stay right on these notes. And so it's a lot easier to keep your thumb down and use your other fingers to grab these black notes. It's also better to use your thumb on the white notes because oftentimes you're playing melodies up the piano and you need to cross your thumb under your other fingers. And this is a lot easier to do when your thumb's playing a white note than if your thumb is playing a black note. So a better fingering for Ode to Joy would be to start on your thumb and then bring it down and cross your third finger over here, and then, and then you could use your four finger if you wanted. Does that make sense? Now, sometimes it's unavoidable to play the black note with your thumb. For example, if you were playing octaves on your black notes, then you would need to use your thumbs. But if you're playing any sort of melody and the melody uses black notes, then you generally want to avoid playing the thumb on the black note. All right, technique mistake number two, I call the awkward relationship. And I'm gonna play a little jazzy chord progression and let's see if you can spot this technique mistake. Did you see the mistake? If you didn't, I'm gonna play it one more time and this time I want you to look at my left hand. Hopefully it was pretty obvious, but what I was doing is a very common mistake that I see a lot of piano players make, and that is they cross their two finger over their third finger when they're playing lines down the piano, okay? And this is definitely something that you want to avoid. If you're playing a walking bass line down the piano, it's much better to start on your thumb and then use your thumb to cross under all of the other notes. Same thing going up the piano. I'll see a lot of piano players walking bass lines and they'll do stuff like this. They'll go two, three, two, three. They're crossing the third finger over the two finger. And once again, you want to avoid this. You want to use your thumb to move you up and then also down the piano. I also see students make this mistake in their right hand. Maybe they're playing some chromatic notes and they're coming up the piano and they'll cross the two finger over the third finger or if they're coming down, they'll do the opposite. They'll go two, three, two, three. See how awkward that looks? So whenever you're maneuvering up or down the piano, you wanna use the thumb. See how much better that looks? And notice how my wrist is generally kind of facing the keyboard. You don't want to use this two over three. Notice how my wrist really has to turn to get these notes in my fingers. By the way, I wanted to mention that the lesson sheet music you're seeing on the top left of your screen is downloadable and printable. You can also change the key of this entire lesson with the click of one button with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to all of that below. All right, technique mistake number three, I call the flying pinky. And let's see if you can see this mistake. Did 
Did you see the technique mistake? If you looked at my pinkies, you might have noticed that they were sticking straight out. And this is a very common mistake that I see a lot of students make, and it's actually a mistake that I made for years and years when I was first learning the piano, is I take my pinkies and I would stick them out kind of straight like this, and I'd play my other fingers. And then whenever my pinky had to play a note, then I would grab the note, but then as soon as I played the other notes, my pinky would come back up like this. And so the way to fix this is to make sure your pinkies are always above a note and make sure that they are curved, okay? So if you're playing a passage of music and you're not using your pinkies, they should still be curved and they should still be above a note. Now, I do want to mention that oftentimes students are not aware of the fact that they're making these mistakes to begin with. And so something I would encourage you to do is to video record yourself playing your keyboard and then watch the video after the fact. And you might realize that you're actually making some of these mistakes that you didn't realize you were making when you were just sitting at your keyboard and playing. And so this will help you kind of see some areas that you might be able to improve in. By the way, I'd love to know which technique mistakes that you've made in the past or perhaps mistakes that you're currently making. So let me know in the comments. All right, technique mistake number four is a super common mistake for beginner level pianists. I call this the one finger hog. And it is really obvious if you've played the piano for some time. So let's see if you can spot this mistake. All right, hopefully it was super obvious to you, but I was basically playing the entire melody in my right hand with my index finger. And so this is a common mistake for complete beginners that really know nothing about piano technique. They'll play a melody with one finger, and obviously you wanna use more than one finger to play your melodies. And so in the case of this melody, it would be better to start on your forefinger, and then you can use all five of your fingers. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, a word of caution to you, you might be making this mistake without realizing it, even if you're an intermediate to advanced level pianist. And what I mean by this is many beginners will use one finger for a lot of their notes, but I'll see oftentimes a lot of advanced pianists, they might use three or four fingers, but they neglect one finger. And so in a way, they're still making this mistake. They're not utilizing all 10 of their fingers. So once again, it doesn't matter your playing level, I would record yourself playing and see if you're actually using all 10 fingers to play various passages of music. All right, technique mistake number five is kind of similar to the last technique mistake, but this is a specific technique mistake that I'll see students make whenever they're repeating a note. So check out this passage of music and see if you can spot what I'm doing wrong. You see in the mistake? Basically what I'm doing is anytime I have a repeated note like a G, I'm playing it with the same finger. Okay, and this can be very fatiguing to play the same note with the same finger. A much better approach is to switch between two fingers on the same note. So I can take the same passage of music and I can go two, one, two. Two, one, two. And you can actually play this really quickly if you speed it up. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on piano playing technique and you're a little more on the beginner side and you also wanna learn some really great warm-ups for the piano, check out our intro to the keyboard course. I'll put a link to that below. All right, technique mistake number six, I call the cliff diver. And let's see if you can spot this mistake. All right, this one can be a little bit harder to spot, but if you watch the video, you might notice that my thumbs are hanging off the edge of the keys. I call this the cliff diver because my thumbs are taking a dive off the edge. And this is definitely something that you want to avoid when you're playing the piano. You wanna keep your thumbs up above the keys. And even if you're not using your thumbs to play the notes, you still want them to be right there and available over the keys. You do not want them hanging out over the edge. All right, technique mistake number seven, I call the karate chop. Let's see if you can spot this mistake. 
All right, this one can also be a little bit hard to spot the first time, but if you look closely, anytime I'm playing my pinkies, I'm doing a karate chop, meaning I'm turning my wrists and I'm straightening out my pinkies, okay? This is a very common mistake, especially for beginner pianists, and it's a mistake that I made for years when I was first learning the piano. And so you do not, when you're playing the pinkies, you don't wanna turn your wrists and make your pinkies straight. You wanna keep your wrist elevated, you wanna keep a curvature in your hand, and you ultimately wanna keep your pinkies bent. So when you're playing the outer notes, notice, that my pinky is moving down, it's not my wrist turning and doing like a karate chop motion. All right, technique mistake number eight is the by far most common technique mistake that I see pianists make across all levels of playing. Let's see if you can spot the mistake. Okay, hopefully it is super obvious to you, but if you watch the video, my fingers are completely flat, okay? And this is something you absolutely want to avoid when you're playing the piano because it will make your playing very choppy, okay? Um, I call this the hiccup mistake, and the reason for this is, you know, playing with flat fingers doesn't necessarily sound bad. Like if I'm playing a melody, right, you probably would have no idea that my fingers are flat. The problem is anytime I'm coming up the piano and I'm crossing my thumb under, if I'm crossing my thumb under to an F and my fingers are flat, I have to jump to the F. And so you hear this little hiccup. And so this is kind of an obvious sign that you're playing with flat fingers is if you're playing a melody that goes up the piano, you hear these little hiccups up the piano. And so it's much better to keep your fingers bent and to have a round hand shape. What this helps you accomplish is anytime you're coming up the piano, if your wrist is elevated, your fingers are bent and you have this round hand shape, your thumb can cross under your other fingers comfortably and this allows you to play smooth lines like scales or whatever melody up and down the piano. All right, technique mistake number nine I call the kink. Let's see if you can spot this one. All right, hopefully this mistake is super obvious to you and this was a little extreme version, but obviously I'm sitting way too low. And so in order to play the keys, I have to kind of bend my wrists and I get this little kink here in my wrist. See how it kind of comes up and then it gets straight like this, okay? You definitely do not want this hand shape when you're playing. Instead, you want your wrists to be flat like this and you generally want it to be about level with the keys. You can be slightly above the keys, but if you're too high like this, then once again, you have a kink in your wrist, and so you wanna avoid this. You wanna come down, and you wanna be relatively level with the keys. All right, technique mistake number 10, I call this the wings mistake, and let's see if you can spot this one. All right, this one might be a little bit hard to see, but when I was just playing, I had my elbows kind of sticking out from my sides and it creates kind of a little wing shape. And this is something that you definitely want to avoid when you're playing the piano. In general, you want to keep your elbows right to your sides. That way you have complete control over whatever you're playing. Now there is an exception to this, and that is if you're playing something at the extreme ranges of the piano, like if I'm playing a big chord up here and a big octave down here, Obviously, I can't keep my elbows to my sides or I wouldn't be able to reach uh, these chords. All right, my friends, this concludes the video. And if you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.